Hello and welcome, good gentles all. My name is Micah Pointer, and I am a graduate employee in the costume shop at the University of Oregon. And today I'm gonna to be working with you on part two of the skirt, hook, and bar. Now, if you remember from when we were working on this previously and for some of our other closure videos, the hook and bar is used for pieces of fabric that are overlapping each other when they close. And for the skirt hook and bar particularly, this is at the top of zippers usually. You can find these in its namesake skirts, also gentlemen in dress pants and slacks just at the top of the fly. And that takes the tension off of the zipper itself so that it doesn't just pull the zipper slider down and apart so it doesn't just unpeel itself that way. So we have already secured our hook if you've been following us on our last video and now is the time for putting on the bar. Now this will be very much like when we were doing just our regular bar here we will have it on the right side of the fabric, just opposite and in line with the hook. Remember, placement is crucial. Nothing is worse than a crooked closure. So being careful of where we have that positioned. We are allowed to go through all layers of fabric. Since we are putting this on the right side, all of our knots and everything will be on the wrong side or the inside of the garment, while the bar itself is on the outside. Okay, so I already have my needle double threaded and knotted off, so we are able to begin. Oops, I'm just gonna double check my placement real quick. Make sure that this is where I want it. Okay, looks appropriate. Very good. So until we get a couple of stitches in, we're going to have to securely hold our bar right here. We can also take a bit of tape or something, what have you, just to hold that in place. And it will be five stitches around each of these little eyelets here. So this one. I tend to like coming out on the inside of the eyelet. Excuse me, would you like to go in? Coming out on the inside, going in on the outside, just because that's what seems to be most efficient for me. I'm able to really manipulate the fabric so I can get a good angle to put my thread into the fabric. Oh, that is way off. There we are. Mm. This one is number three. And I'm trying to dis distribute the weight and the tension as much as I can. So I'm trying to kind of fan my stitches out around the eyelet here. Unlike for the eye and the bar right here, we don't have to worry about any gaps for the eyelets that we're working with because instead of these being pieces of wire that are bent around into the loops, these are holes that are created by being punched out in the metal that the bar is made out of. So we don't have to worry about our stitches slipping out or coming off or doing wild and crazy things that we don't like. So I'm just gonna do one more right there and then jump over to the next hole. Okay, whoops, without getting the rest of our product caught in it. Okay, and jumping over, coming out. This will be five more stitches. Stitch one. Stitch two. Oops, stitch there. Oh, come on, let go. <laughs> Stitch four. Stitch five. 
Okay. Now, because this is on the inside part of the garment, on the wrong side of the fabric, you are able to just stitch straight across for when going over to these other set of holes here. Because <laughs> I like to make my life difficult and keep things nice and clean and tidy, I'm actually going to tunnel that stitch between the layers of fabric. Again, not necessary, but I prefer it so that it keeps, again, everything nice and tidy and keeps things from getting caught on stuff that's not supposed to. So, oh gracious, now it's going to be stubborn. Hmm. Okay. And again, it's a little bit more secure because now we have two holes that we're securing it down with instead of just one hole here. So there isn't as much play with it as with the regular bar, but even still, as you notice, it can get kind of cattywampus if you're not careful. So just as before, it's really important to make sure that you're coming out and securing these holes right where you want them to be. Once I can find where the point of my needle is, oh, there you are, a little bit further, a little bit further. Okay, let's not quite a little further. There, that'll be good. Okay, and I'll be coming up inside the hole. Going down on the outside. Making five stitches again. Oh, that's right, I can go through all the layers. Hey. This one, whoops, yes, we can use to jump over and come up in the middle of the other eye. There we are. And down on the outside. Up on the inside. Down on the outside. Up on the inside. I believe this one is stitch three that we're doing right now. So it'll be two more from here, and then we can tie off. Alright. So, now that we're back on the wrong side of the fabric, I can take my little anchor stitch just on that inside layer, making the loop, making sure that <laughs> both of my threads are even. There we go, going once through the loop, twice through the loop and tightening it down to make our knot. There we go. Trimming away the excess. Or if you want to be super fancy, you can tunnel your tails, just as we've done in previous projects. But moment of truth, let's see how it works. 
Ooh, that was a nice, satisfying snap. Excellent. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Very nice. And there we have it. The skirt hook and bar. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions or need clarification on anything, my email is in the University of Oregon website. And happy stitching!